Welcome to this video where we'll be looking at pile coordination and pile numbering using Naviate Accelerate and Naviate Structure. We'll begin the process by checking the shared coordinates using our Base Point Explorer tool. In the Base Point Explorer dialog box you can see that we have our East West, North South, Elevation and Rotation set correctly. Next, we'll configure our parameters to ensure that we're using our correct shared parameters. Naviate will default to CQ coordinates X, Y and Z, but we're going to map these to our own shared parameters, easting, northing and also the pile cutoff level. Ok, next we'll decide how and when our parameters can be updated. So in the Update Parameters dialog, we'll first configure the shared elevation, we'll ensure that structural foundations is checked, and here we're converting from millimetres to metres. We'll do a similar thing for our shared coordinates, and of course we can decide how these update, whether they are updating on save, a print and export, but in this case we'll update manually, and we have a date and timestamp of that update. Let's now check one of the piles. So we'll select the pile and we can clearly see the easting, northing, cutoff level, rotation angle and also the top elevation, bottom elevation and thickness have now been updated for each pile. We'll now use colour elements to check key information such as levels, thicknesses and pile diameters. This is a great tool to check our design and check for consistency within our structural elements. So in this case here, we're going to now check the pile diameters. And finally here, we'll check the thickness of the pile caps. Okay, so that key information has now been reviewed and checked using color elements. The next step is to use Naviate Structure to actually number up the piles and extend them down to the topo surface. Let's switch to the Naviate Structure ribbon and first we'll select Pile Numbering. Here we're going to use the standard method for the numbering. We'll start the numbering at number 1. We'll have a padding set up, a prefix of P and again we'll make sure that we're numbering up all the piles and we'll go horizontal and then vertical and start in the bottom left of our project. This will not take into account piles that are grouped into pile caps, beams and foundations, but is useful for loose piles. We can now review this numbering system, and as we've said, this will not take into account piles that are hosted or nested into caps or ground beams, but this is useful for loose piling arrangements. We can check this again with colour elements. So if we go into colour elements, this time we'll base this on our structural foundation, and we'll use our mark instance parameter and of course we'll now see that the colours are not consistent around the grouped piles so that clearly tells us that those numbering systems aren't good for this system we've got at the moment so let's go back and renumber these using pile numbering and again we'll keep all the same parameters but this time we're going to subdivide the piles by their host ok so let's start in the bottom left again and we'll click ok we can now just review the numbering system first, so if we zoom in, we can now see that the pile numbers are grouped around the pile caps. Like we said, this would also work for structural foundation slabs, ground beams and other types of foundation as long as the piles are hosted. We can then use colour elements once again to actually check for this information. So we'll use the same mark instance parameter and we can now review and check those numbering systems and we can see that we've got consistent colouring with those pile caps. OK, next thing we'll do is we'll extend and trim the piles back to our topo surface. This topo surface could be created in Civil 3D from a borehole analysis and we can then link that across via BIM 360. You'll now notice that all of the piles have been extended or trimmed back to that topo surface. Let's now take a look at the piling schedule within Revit. We'll first make sure that the pile schedule is sorted via the pile reference. 
So let's do that. We'll go to sorting and grouping and we'll ensure that pile reference is our sorting method. And you can now see the schedule is sorted correctly. Notice that we have all of our information that's been inputted via Navigate. Next, we're going to get our engineering team to add in the pile loadings. We're going to do this within Excel. So we'll use the Navigate tool to export out to Excel. We'll save this on the server somewhere or perhaps in BIM 360 and our engineering team can then review the information and also then update this directly in Microsoft Excel. So you now notice that the engineering information has been added in. We can then simply save this. We can go back to our export import tool and now we'll import that Excel file directly back. You'll then notice that all of the values are imported and updated against each of those piles. Finally, we'll check this loading condition information within the 3D view, once again using colour elements. So this time we're going to actually select our load. And then of course we can then review those loads again using colour elements. Okay, so that concludes our process for the creation of those piles, the management and numbering of the piles. Thanks for watching. Do make sure that you subscribe to our videos and check out our blog. Thank you and see you again soon.